Uh, welcome everyone to the screening of the Hermit Hermitage Dwellers. Uh, it's a truly remarkable and uh, a fairly short uh, documentary about an, a really incredible story of uh, survival and the preservation of the great treasures of the Hermitage Art Museum in St. Petersburg during World War II. Uh, we are so privileged to have the general director of the Hermitage Museum, uh, Mikhail uh, Borisovich Petrovsky, uh, on hand at three o'clock to uh, discuss the film and answer your questions, uh, as well as the director of the film, Aliona van der Horst, uh, and uh, producer of the film. Uh, so uh, as you're watching, think of questions you might ask. Um, you can type them into the Q&A uh, uh, function at any point, um, and you can also use the, uh, uh, the function under participants to raise your hand uh, if you'd like to ask your question. Uh, verbally after the film is over. So uh, enjoy the film. If you have any difficulties with the technology of the streaming, it, look in the chat. There's a link there to um, view uh, the MP4 directly. Uh, that might be a, a better way to see it and avoid any technical problems. Uh, or you can go if you have library access to the library catalog and find the film under DocuSeq. Um, the, that is a database that has it. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's watch this amazing film and get ready for our uh, discussion later. Enjoy. Great, thank you very much. Um, Eliana, did you have some opening remarks or should we move to question and answer? I believe yeah, you're muted. There my, you yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I think uh, what is what Piotrowski, hello. <laughs> Actually, we didn't hello. see it for 10 years. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he mentioned what I also found really, really uh, well. Uh, life and time goes on. Many people who are now uh, only present and alive in the film, but are not alive in life anymore. So I'm actually more than more than pleased that they're at least in the film and they can live on in the film uh, because they were absolutely remarkable one in one in a lifetime people I have ever met. So, so now we can move on to some questions and uh, yeah. Um, so, um... Marianne Allen asked a question for you, Mikhail Borisovich, whether your father uh, wrote a memoir and whether you are planning to write a memoir of your <laughs> remarkably long durée uh, leadership of the great museum. Well, uh, thank you. The question where my father has written memoirs, two books, it's, one is called The Pages of My Life and another about his trips. Um, you know, I haven't written any memoirs. My book called My Hermitage is a little bit of a memoir because it's uh, a little bit, not a little bit, a lot about my own feeling and my understanding of Hermitage, nothing to do with just education. And also there are two books already written, not by us, one book about me and one book about me and my father published also in English. So we have biographies. So it's right time to write a memoir just to reject the biographies to explain how it was in the real life, <laughs> something like this. And I'm uh, glad to hear that Mary, how Mary Ann Allen is, because I just want to inform you that in two days we are opening a new Fabergé exhibition. She was the main organizer of the first very important Fabergé exhibition in Hermitage, 1993. And now we are clothing the circle by a new Fabergé exhibition with a lot of new things. Uh, discovered so that's how Hermitage is living and so best regards to Mariam. Very good and and do you have any uh, stories from your father's experience in Leningrad uh, during the war that you'd like to yes, share? Yes but also I don't see if you have seen in the film when I'm talking about this uh, you know people uh, who lived a difficult life in Russia really difficult be it siege or prison and things, never talked a lot about all the difficult things in their life. They were talking about some more interesting things. They always was keeping this tragedy in themselves. People who speak about tragedies are different kind of people. You know, these people probably didn't. So when my father was talking about the uh, war during the siege, he was telling me 
how they was giving lectures to each other, how they had been celebrating his birthday with uh, some small pieces of bread and the glue of restorers and something like this. And things which are not exactly jokes, but something which makes it uh, us more optimistic, not making talk about the much about the tragedy. The same thing about the in general, the life before the war, I was telling him was, well, in 34 after Kieran's death, he was arrested, spent half a, half a year in prison. But all his stories was about how I have been the wonderful people who have met because really in Soviet prison in the 30s, he was meeting all the best people of for intelligence uh, <laughs> the the Russians. So, so this always returning the stories a little bit of the, this way, which is a good and important lesson. You know, for instance, when we have in the film, we have a wonderful story about icons and we have a beautiful uh, film how the churches are destroyed and how the crosses are falling and falling and falling. For me, very important issues story the, the cross on the church of winter palace was always there it never went down so this is right it's hermitage it never went down it was done before the war after revolution during the war after the war so when they began to erect or to return crosses on the different churches of st petersburg this one was always here so uh, it was two parts of the story that's very interesting. Um, and uh, Serge Schmeyman asks a question um, uh, about the return of the art after the war was over. And uh, you know, if you could say a few words about that process and, and uh, to the extent to which uh, there were uh, works of art were destroyed, it's the, the, the process of bringing it all back. Well, well, thank you very much. And also very much appropriate because on the 4th of November, we're celebrating 75 years or reopening Hermitage after the war, just on the 4th of November. So we today have been discussing how we'll do celebrate it online because there is no celebration online. Well, uh, it's, I think, really fantastic. They managed to evacuate everything in a very short time. They managed to keep it all intact and they brought it back and well, nothing, well, some things have been destroyed, not much. And because the museum was protected by the air defense and the people who are standing on the uh, roofs uh, catching the uh, fire bombs, and they protected it in Sverdlovsk. And then only one picture, really one thing, was one day San Sebastian. His picture was somehow disappeared during the, the war. Nobody knows how they forgot it in uh, Leningrad. It was lost during the transportation. Maybe I think it was forgotten in uh, Leningrad during the evacuation. But anyway, it was all in very good condition because. There was always things have been checked. The things which stayed in Hermitage and the things which have been in Sverdlovsk. It's, it's a nightmare when you uh, read books, how they're checking according to schedule, they were checking like today. Today we are not so good disciplined. Checking with the hour when you have to check your collection, the day when you have to check your collection. Everything was checked and it was a great thing. And there was a fantastic thing of restoring, cleaning Hermitage just to prepare it for the pictures which came back. Uh, also wonderful. The story of uh, this and uh, and then there all became the res big restoration of the Hermitage, big uh, celebration was prepared and one the big pictures have been ordered from uh, artists to make big pictures about how Hermitage is restored and then the event finished. The uh, Leningrad Skadiela, the Leningrad case began and the story of the heroism of the city of Leningrad was it was decided must be better forgotten because they, these people of Leningrad thinks, thinks too much about themselves. So in a way, what's up? But then all the time, the museum was restored and uh, we always remember all this story. When we have problems, I always say, you know, the real problem was in the war. In the war, it was a real problem. All the problems which we had, uh, we have in our time are nothing to this comparison of uh, possibility of being destroyed, the museum was just on the brink of being destroyed. This or in other ways. So, and best regards to Serge. So, we're also discussing now, very important two days ago, some important issue about European University. There's some news coming up. That's an ongoing saga as well. Um, yes. So, 
So just a reminder for the audience, uh, there is a raise hand function. Uh, if you click the participants down uh, on the bottom, the window on the right, uh, you can raise your hand to ask a question. Um, I have a note here from Elizabeth for Mikhail Borisovich saying, thank you so much for the slideshow of the Hermitage. Um, I visited eight times, but never had the opportunity to visit the museum. And my question is, how has the absence of visitors as a result of the pandemic impacted uh, the museum and curators there? Well, uh, from one side, it's a problem. We don't have crowds of people, so we don't have uh, income which we are accustomed to have and which government began accustomed to have. They have so that we can earn money. Now we show them, no, we can't earn money. Museum without visitors is also a museum, so please give money. And they're giving, they're giving the money. Well, at least we're pressing them. Uh, another thing is there are no crowds, no people standing in line. We have 4,000 visitors a day. Uh, we can afford, by the way, we can afford normally seven, eight thousand visitors a day. Usually we had 14,000 visitors a day. So museum is not crowded in a way. It's not good enough. It's a little bit better than it was before. So we, it's an important, important lesson that well crowded museum is certainly everybody knew it's not it's bad for the for art. It's also bad for visitors because now you, when I look at the visitors in the museum or in this dress code with masks and so on, you see they're going around and they're looking at every picture. Usually they're looking at the things they a guy, the tools, they're looking at the right to the left and then stride and everybody is well, fighting to get ahead and so on. So in a way it is, uh, people do come, maybe not enough for economic, from economic point of view, but from certain point of view of aesthetic, it's, uh, it looks, museum looks very good. And, but you know, well, I coming to Hermitage, you, when you go through the room, see every room has five, six persons. We have people coming in shifts every half hour, half an hour. Uh, we had to leave from now and now. People uh, go in and uh, they're coming in shifts. And, and every room has five, six, and 20. As you can imagine, it is it does also well from the point of view of economic, is it's a disaster. But well, society has to keep the museums. Yeah, it's um. Uh, I I remember my last time at the museum. It was a uh, very elbow to elbow, yeah. and it was very hard to see yeah, things. Exactly. So I mean, I suppose there's a bit of a silver lining in this situation. But I, I want to turn to Eliana with a question. Um, uh, how did you come to the idea of making this film? Well. Actually, uh, it started with, I think, this amazing good relationship between uh, Ernst Fein in, in the Netherlands and uh, Michal Boris Piotrowski. Uh, uh, and there, like the, this Ernst Fein, he, he invited me as a young filmmaker to make a small film because the Dutch Queen was visiting. And there were like two violent players on the roof and uh, and I had to make something of it. And then I met this oh, wonderful yeah. woman, um, uh, Olga, uh, because we asked for a chair. And then I thought, wow, this is quite a character. And then I was actually, I was asked to make a film about the, uh, well, I don't know if you know, but there is a kind of beautiful, great, Hermitage in Amsterdam, which is called the Hermitage on the Amstel, uh, where there is all, well, now you have all those collections, but then 20 years ago, it was still a project and it was a home of, for elderly people. So uh, so I was asked to make a film about, well, actually the, the, uh, the big uh, restyling of this building. And I said, well, I'd rather make a film about the people instead because I'm a people person and I really wanted to make a film about all these wonderful people who, who were working behind the screens and uh, of the Hermitage Museum and called them Hermitage. So, so this is about what it came. And I must say it is still, I tell everybody, I got this amazing thing, which is for every filmmaker, which is called the carte blanche. So, and, the, uh, and I think it's amazing that Mr. Piotrowski give me, gave me just, you know, okay, make the film you want. I, I'm fine with it. So uh, I don't know if you are still fine with it after it, but 
but I think that it's a bit like Gorbachev, uh, who uh, who now uh, there's been a play made a play made in Moscow, maybe you're aware of it uh, about Gorbachev. Yeah, there is a play about yeah. and and he also said, and everybody said like, but why didn't you interfere? And he said, this is what I call freedom. You have to experience it. So, and I think uh, Mr. Piotrowski is of the same generation, but but at least of the same mindset. <laughs> He's not of the same generation, but and um, so this is how. So, and then I was there for, for I think almost a year. I, I I went and I talked to I think hundreds of people and um, and filmed just a couple of them. And I actually I made a series of six episodes, which. And what you have seen the film or part of it uh, is uh, is the feature film which was made out of these six episodes. So that's the short answer to it. <laughs> no, great, thank you. Um, and we have a, a, a touching uh, comment for in the Q and A from Mariana Landa, uh, who says that one of the Hermitage dwellers in the film, Yuna Zek, is my mother, and she's sitting right now next to me. Uh, and she sends her gratitude right. to Ms. Vanderhorst for the wonderful film and to Mikhail Borisovich for everything he is, he is doing for the Hermitage. Right, great. Greetings. Greetings. Yeah, great. Yes. Great. You both know her, I think. Yes, yes, we say yes. hello. Yeah. Yeah. She's a wonderful yeah. person as well. <laughs> Very nice. Well, she's one of the most important persons in the film. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. I, uh, I remember the clocks and I remember also the, uh, the way that she is still, you know, they have to put a clock and she is just almost dying because, you know, it's such an uh, intense moment and everything has to be right and you cannot drop a clock. So uh, it's really, uh, well, passionate. I think now the word passion is a bit abused. It, well, everything is a passion. Mm -hmm. hope it's a passion, but I think the Hermitage Nicks, they're really, have this passion in the in the old way of the word. I wonder too, um, Mikhail Borisovich, if you could maybe say a word about some of the things that the museum does that are maybe not apparent to the general public. Uh, some of the educational outreach uh, connections with other with with uh, universities in in the in town. Uh, maybe some things like that. Um, uh, well, uh, we have a kind of, it's not a religion, it's a general point of view that the museum is very uni a very universal thing. The museum is, well, people think that museum is a place for visit and see pictures. It's nothing to do. Museum, first of all, as a museum has five, at least five parts to collect, to keep, to study, to restore, and then to show to the public. And all the five things are very important. And even showing to the public is education. Museum is a library, an archive, and a university. So we always try to combine all this and to explain people that this is what museum is. It's very difficult to explain them that the storage is the most important part of the museum because all the scholarship is going there. And it's difficult to explain them if we say masterpiece. Things become masterpiece when the uh, scholars make it a masterpiece with their study. Without this, it would, when we say masterpiece, it's masterpiece. Sometimes people ask me, well, about contemporary art, what is, well, like, what is it art or not? How do you decide is it's art or not? Well, we are very arrogant to Hermitage. I'm saying if we show it in Hermitage, it's art again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the only way to discuss about contemporary art with the people who hate it. And in Russia, a lot of people do hate contemporary and modern art. So, <laughs> uh, in a way, we are, so, so we are diplomats. We try to keep all these wonderful relations uh, going on the cultural way we nowadays i'm afraid every three days we're telling well culture is a bridge between nations and this is a bridge which has to be blown up for the last because most of them are already blown up so our is still going on it's still thanks god but well you know still with 10 for 10 years we don't have museum exchanges with the united states and so on so it's very complicated we are very important i think it just told us uh, yesterday I think on our ceremony with the American ambassador, told, you know, when things are beginning to become bad, we feel the first uh, sign is in the museum life. When things become difficult, this, then you see 
The things are going. We have seen in Russian-American relations, by the way. The first problems have been with museums exchange, and then everything began to go. I think, and also the, the things who are in, improving. Also, the first signs, the first uh, signal will come in museum life. So I think what we are getting. I hope we are getting some new new signal from from God that things will improve. So this is one of the mystical things which museum uh, have. We try to show this mystic and economic together for things of the uh, museum. Mm -hmm. So because we love it. And one thing uh, I wanted to say how we made Adona to do everything. Not everybody. We still we uh, trust mm -hmm. we all one of the motto we have why not when something is proposed. Not impossible. Why not? And another thing we do trust Dutch. Dutch. From the time of Peter the Great, it's a legacy of Peter the Great. We do trust Dutch. <laughs> so after, after Lone, we had also British, even British making films about Hermitage, but Dutch is a very special thing, very, very special relation. That's why we have Hermitage in Amsterdam. That's why today we are changing exhibitions in Hermitage Amsterdam, which is very complicated nowadays. You go to uh, the couriers to go there, you have get permission in Russia, get permission in uh, from Holland permission to change planes in uh, Istanbul and so on. So what while we manage and we're changing exhibition, we are changing of the director there. So the life is very vivid, Hermitage, Amsterdam. We are part, we try to be a global museum. So we are very active. This, even during the uh, pandemic, we have five or six Hermitage days and weeks around uh, Russia. So we try to show people that life, museum, life comes from museums. That's wonderful. We um, so with the Carmel Institute, we have uh, provided scholarships for a number of our master's students in uh, public history and museum studies to go to the Hermitage Museum yeah. and work in their program on uh, the art and science of museums, uh, and they very much enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if any of them are present and uh, would like to say a word about that, but. Um, uh, it's a great program, and of course, they were very disappointed last year that, or this this last summer, that they couldn't go. But hopefully next year. Well, hopefully next year, I think it will come back. And uh, are there uh, are there any other things, Eliana, that you'd like to say about um, your experience of interviewing and meeting all of these uh, the people that you met? Uh, yeah, but the, I, I saw there's another question. If you made the film, same film today, what would the work there be like? How old? So I was actually <laughs> I was pondering that question uh, because when I was there, uh, I think the Hermitage, I don't know how it, it is there, but for me as a Dutch person, we have a really a very horizontal way of uh, of working, of hierarchy. We, we don't do a lot of hierarchy and I think the museum was extremely hierarchic in a way, like the, the pyramid down. Uh, so, th and the good thing was because Michal Borisovic gave the permission to film, everybody had to say <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, of course, uh, and still everybody was very, very, every little um, uh, uh, curator had his own little universe and his own little, um, Kingdom, I would say, and uh, and when I was filming there, uh, I saw the young new generation who is, I think now, in their forties, in their fifties, working with the older generation, and uh, well, you know, all this knowledge is being transmitted, and I think also the, this Russian system, which I think is very valuable in a way, is. That you're, you 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 have somebody you know you have you have a teacher you you're not like having you know the books it's like the person teaches you how to deal with the things and when I was filming I saw also some generation conflict because you know the younger generation they get their information from all over the world they have a much more um, uh, how would they how could I put it a more, more yeah, mundane and uh, uh, international view of art history and curating and that would sometimes clash but they had to to be a bit you know uh, silent while they were not in a position to you know speak up 
So, and I think now a lot has changed and a lot of yeah, new energy comes into the museum. But I think uh, Mr. Piotrowski can answer this question better because I haven't been to the museum for the last, I think, five years. Well, actually, every time I come, I visit, but, and I visit some of the old people I know. And every time I go in, I see some familiar faces, but, but I know I miss also some of the new uh, workers. So maybe you can tell how much of, how young are the new, uh, what, what, what kind of film would there be if I would make the film today? Would it be different? Uh, well, yeah. it will be good for you to come and to make a new film because <laughs> we, have, we have done several new films. And then there was a British film, Hermitage Revealed, very different from yours. Uh, not so psychological. Yours is wonderful. It's uh, you manage to make people trust you and speak to you. It's very difficult. Usually they don't. People in Hermitage are very close. I don't. Well, that's why I also permitted you everything because people told me that they like to speak to you. Mm. They, and we see they're very open. All these people are not at all. Never have been spoken in general. You know, like never. And so, so anyway, uh, then we have done just recently a film very modern for young generation and just before the pandemic five hours 20 minutes on telephone music and hermitage no explanation uh, very modern because in a way it was one shot like sokurov but it was also a new telephone so in a way it was a very modern scene of advertising <laughs> or whatever. so and suddenly museum closed and they were telling everybody you can Look, museum five hours 20 minutes just while well, slowly reading slow reading which usually nobody has time for this so all of different things can be done but it's so great that we have so uh, well alone's film uh i would I, I managed to see it on youtube <laughs> finally once oh, again it, it's very it's not on youtube i think it's forbidden to be on youtube because of rights and things like that but, um, i don't know how well I'm mm. sorry, I asked sorry. my colleagues to find it because I took the disc you gave me and it was working before and now is always my... Yeah, computer. I know. Maybe I should one. do the illegal it's YouTube. Uh, I should put it's it illegally on YouTube. Don't, don't tell I'm anybody. Gonna, it's me. My, our press office managed to find it to me somewhere. That is, okay. <laughs> it's, because this is the thing, all the good things become becoming illegal nowadays. Yeah, yeah. We have a problem, for instance, there's another wonderful film, The Russian Ark by... So cool, yeah. which uh, because of uh, rights can't be shown in Russia because rights belong to some company which doesn't give rights for Russia, so it, it can be shown around the world, it can't be shown legally in Russia. So it's uh, but I think precarious. we have the opposite, it's the rights belong to you. So if you give me the rights, I put it on YouTube. <laughs> oh, so let's check if the rights began to ask, we'll give you the rights, yeah. let's put it in. No yeah. way because okay, good. <laughs> we have settled this. <laughs> very, very important result. <laughs> <of the meeting. laughs> um, so, so we have time for maybe one more question. And um, there, there was a question by, from Mark about the new storage facility and whether it's open to the public. And I think that's an interesting general question for museums. Uh, maybe you could say a word about what I assume is a vast uh, collection that is not on display at any given moment and and how it is that you manage that, use it, provide access or don't provide access to the public? Well, certainly the storage is visited by the public, by groups. The general idea is that uh, we're always explaining to the people, the, PS, the usual question, how much of their collection is on show? Then you say, well, 10%, 5%, every normal museum is 5 or 10 percent is on show. And then you begin to explain, you know, but in normal museum, it must be this way. And then people don't believe you. They think, well, you just don't want to show. And they're saying, well, you're keeping something secret. And then, so we decided that the right, the right time is to show everything for people to see all the hundreds of uh, amphoras, Greek amphora we have, all the carriages restored and not restored. And it's a very special way of showing. We have people come by groups. So every day you can come and you go around. The storages are open. Some of them are just prepared for things to be shown. You have all the carriages, as I said, restored and not restored. Important issue which you're discussing about restoration. You show them, you see, these things are not restored and they will never be restored. 
we have to keep things as they are. Restoration is not exactly the very good thing. Sometimes you need restoration. Sometimes you must keep things like they are. Restoration is like Botox. You making a surgery for the face. It's, it's sometimes it's needed, but not always. You also must keep some examples how it was. So it's uh, and a number of things which don't send you anything until you put them into a special context. You teach people a lot of things just in the storage. And it's wonderful to show more and more objects. We, every day opening something new. Now we have the stained glass exhibition in of vitrages in uh, this Stare Direvne, just one new addition to this permanent display. And we put a portrait, we made a small corridor also new with the guns, with the cannons, with the portrait of Arakcheyev, because he was the well, main commander of organizer of Russian artillery in the time of Poland, Alexander. And so we can always add a lot of new things there. And, and in times of COVID, have you developed a, a kind of virtual tour of uh, the uh, museum uh, and, and also maybe of some of these artworks that are not on display? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have we developed a whole hierarchy of uh, visits, which is very interesting. It is a casting for Mao people because we have a professional, professional guides showing things. We have uh, keepers showing things. We have researchers tell about their discoveries, restorers telling about things. So we show things which people never see, see when they just come to the museum. And we also have the casting for the visitors because some visitors just love Hermitage and love whatever you show. Some visitors are always very critical why this guy doesn't speak a fluent language, why he's stopping and I'm saying stop. He's one of the great authorities in the world about the things he are discussing. So it's not such a problem if he doesn't pronounce a eh, something like a professional uh, pronounce and so so it's a very good and vivid discussion with the public we have now just because we can sh show them things which are much more than they usually see in the museum usually and we also discussed it with our uh, colleagues in the west that people usually don't look at the site of museum before going to the museum we teach them to be prepared to the museum we're putting so much information during the covid so now they understand that they're prepared and they, they come to the museum, they come back and look again on what we are giving to them. It's a very, I think now we have found the proper balance between online and offline because it was not clear. But now it's very good balance. We know how it is interconnected. Hmm. Wonderful. Um, can, I, can I add one thing? Because I just, uh, people always ask me, why did you make this film? I have to do, um, admit something because um, I hated as a child I hated to go to museums and also I was always very very tired when I went to a museum and uh, so then I thought but what is it that people and I know one person who was also working as a guide in the Hermitage Museum and when she told me things I loved it uh, uh, you know her of course and um, so my aim was to, to to get behind it and you know what i uh, what for me was like the big revelation of making this film and understanding what why people just you know felt like uh, well all the people who work there at hermitage they really have this it's like a drug they're like drug addicts you know they cannot live without a museum and it's true and when I was walking there, like in the early morning, when I, before we were started to shoot, there was always, you know, one kind of painting. And one day you have this intuist, intuitive uh, way of looking at this painting and the painting starts really to speak to you in some way. So you, you get this really almost, uh, well, uh, spiritual feeling of the being in really in a close connection with the painting. And this is actually what all the people tell me in the film as well. And, uh, and I'm sure many people who, who work in a museum have this really uh, very personal connection. You can also have it when you're not working in a museum if you visit you know, long enough. And then the next day I would pass the same painting and nothing will happen. And then the day after something happens with another painting. So this, 
this being in this close proximity with the paintings really uh, told me this. And, uh, and, and it is something you cannot, you know, put into words, but I'm sure this is something the people who work in museums keep for, to themselves as well. So this is what I wanted to say to you that, that it really makes sense to, to, to visit often, every day. And now even in the COVID times, I think people get this connection more often because it, it, it's terrible when it's crowded. You, you don't see anything anymore. So. Uh, Mikhail Borisovic, any last words for us? Well, thank you very much for inviting me for showing this film because it's a wonderful film. It's so great that people do see it now because it's well, films really do have long life. And while I am waiting for you all to come and for the summer school in the Hermitage, so it's very <laughs> concrete things. We are, pre we are ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, we hope it's sooner rather than later. But listen, I, I thank you both so much for joining us. Uh, we're greatly honored and um, it was wonderful to, to meet you and to, to see you and, and discuss this great film with you and this amazing museum. So. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to your audience for sticking with us through, uh, <laughs> through our difficulties and, uh, and staying for the discussion. Thank you, everyone. Good, and uh, good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It was a pleasure to see you, Alana. Yeah, it was a pleasure to see you too. <laughs>